Welcome to this new episode on uh, neural networks for architects. And this is a sketch of a neural network uh, to work with uh, smart buildings. The key problem with smart buildings is that they uh, have an infrastructural engineering uh, view towards the software to, uh, to run on it which means you have a lot of sensors, for example, a light switch, and you have a lot of actuators, for example, the like bulb. And um, they think, to, to run the problem, they think of it as wiring uh, actu actuators with uh, sensors, which means switch number 23 should switch uh, light uh, number 46, 120, and 12. So you can imagine if you uh, have a fully equipped uh, smart buildings. Uh, this gets complicated with, especially with a kind of nice super function, whatever you want to call it. So, for example, what happens if I'm leaving uh, the building? What should be with the <coughs> with uh, with the heating, with the blinds, with the security system, with the TV set, uh, and, and so on? What with the uh, machines in the kitchen, what is about safety, and so on. If I'm coming back at night, if I'm coming back at noon, if, I, if kids stay at home alone, what do you want to do with it, with all these uh, devices? What is, if weather forecast says uh, there will be a storm and you're not at home, what should the system do? So and you see, the more uh, uh, sensors and actuators you have, this, and the more you think about it, 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 this is a typical case of combinatoric explosion. So, in fact, this costs about 50% of a setup of a, uh, of, uh, of a smart building is just uh, software. And it's even the case that uh, then you have a serial number for the switches, for the bulbs, for, for all the devices, you have serial numbers, and of course, these uh, devices are then built in the ceiling or uh, at the back side of a switch. So you don't have these things and you don't know them. And uh, if you built up an office building, we had, it, had one uh, in 1999 for Microsoft in, in Munich with 30,000 of uh, devices and serial numbers. And of course, this in the first, uh, the, the, the wrong numbers had been mounted at the, at the given place. So it's always pff, cables had not been properly <coughs> following the layout, mixed up and so on. To find these errors is super complicated and super expensive. And the same then even goes worth with uh, maintaining of these things. What happens if a, if a device uh, breaks? You have to change it with a, with a new one with another serial number. Then you have to go to the stable, this code, and change the serial number. Even worse, if you want to add a new uh, a device, how to connect it to all these, uh, these, the system of what you think this should be. So that's why smart buildings don't work and are very expensive and over time they uh, degenerate. So they go out of proper operation. People are frustrated and give up. With neural networks, you, and this I think it's, it's very important for architects, you turn it from the engineering and the infrastructural view towards the persons and the use, and it's a kind of physiological uh, view and understanding of uh, what should be there. So, and now this is just a sketch of how to uh, do this. Uh, get it uh, on your desktop. So, <clears throat> we think a room as an environment. So these are the environmental parameters, for example. You can say which are the activities. There's, there are people, uh, people can, uh, there can be none, laying, sitting, standing. So it can be uh, window positions, can be closed, open, blind position, closed, open, and so on. It's just one room here, and uh, this makes some 20 parameters. So let's uh, have it, do it. So to generate the event, it looks like this. Uh, generate a room, 
Now it needs uh, the data from the internet, therefore it takes a little time. So at a certain what was at a certain time, at a certain day, what was the is the sun position, what was the weather conditions at this time, and so on. So and here you see these are the sensors of the building. So the uh, they say the blind positions is closed, it's shaded, there are two of them, window position closed and closed. Uh, users, uh, there are two users, one is sitting there, and the one user, one is sitting there, the other is not. And uh, these things, ventilation inside, brightness inside, and so on. So this is the environment. So And you don't want to understand what's going on, uh, why it is like this, and so on. You simply want to say, this is the situation. And you ask, not a functional question, you ask, is this healthy? So, and if somebody is sitting there at three in the morning with a temperature by my, with, with around zero and an inside temperature of 31, this is random, so then you say, this is not good. And the brightness is zero, this is not good. So let's uh, uh, go here and then we, this is an, uh, <coughs> this is a function to to look at it. Um, create the event list, and uh, we ask, "What is this?" And then we say, "It's too hot. It's uh, it's not bright enough, so I need more light at these two points." And uh, that's it. And then submit. So I simply say, I don't talk about temperatures and so on. I simply say this is too hot. Make it so I, I, I disagree. It's not healthy. Or I say, this is, I can't can see. You switch uh, light on and that's it. So no reason for that. No nothing. Just you don't feel well. System says thank you and learns it. And by that, it easily adapts to users' uh, behavior and what user thinks without reasoning about that. It re easily adapts to one of the sensors not calibrated or getting defect. So it easily includes uh, uh, new devices because you simply say, this should be off as well. You say, thank you, next time I do better. And uh, this is how uh, it works. And uh, it's very important, these 20 parameters for, for a single room. If you have an apartment, then you're with, with 100 or 200 parameters, no problem here. If you're with an office building and 10,000, a neural network with 10,000 vector, a vector of 10,000, no problem to do that. Simple. So if you add a, a device, add a parameter a sensor. If you add an actuator, add a parameter to train. And done. Yeah, so it's super smooth, no engineering, and it's uh, it's not about thinking about wiring or infrastructure, it's about thinking about comfort or health of uh, the people. A very architectural approach. And the interesting is that you don't try to understand what is going on or why, you simply say, I want to be nice to you. This should be healthy. So, technique-wise, it looks like this. Uh, we translate our, our scheme here and take just the parameters, get numbers for, for these categories. Uh, this is here, this is an encoder. For the outputs, we make an, uh, uh, so therefore we simply say, okay, these are our parameters, this is a vector. It's very rough, you can easily improve this, just to give you an idea. So then, uh, for the output, we need an encoder as well, if we want to have it in a proper uh, list, for example, the blinds up and so on. So this is here, decoder to get it back, the results back, it's a decoder. So, if we want to have uh, these numbers here of uh, our, let we say, 
of our uh, question here, if we started to, to, to question it with this uh, at event and want to render it back, then simply see th this says light is okay, light two more, light three more, blind, blind, okay, heat is, should be down, ventilation is okay. So just this decoding to get uh, things. So like always here, we have uh, the network. It goes from uh, fully connected linear layer 20 to fully connected uh, linear layer uh, 7. These are the inputs, these are the outputs in this case. If you have bigger, no problem. 10,000 here, 5,000 5, here. Same, here have the decoders and decoders. Uh, put that either into these tables so that you can make your uh, uh, intellectual experiment. You can go with, uh, with the encoders and decoders to a game engine, to your smartphone or to the actual uh, environment of your building. No problem. So just the question of encoder and decoder, not of the uh, game itself. So therefore, now if you run that, you have crazy values. Now we can train it with the events uh, we had. It's just this one event we, we, tr we, we developed. Train it um, and it's there, of course. And uh, now we ask in the situation one, what will you suggest? And he suggests, of course, the things we trained. And by that, the system, for example, can record over day <coughs> all the new events. So if people are not happy with how the building worked, overnight it can uh, re recalculate its, uh, its network and then operate for the next day. That's uh, it. And this would decrease the costs by at least 50%, the maintenance cost by, uh, by 80%, and uh, would open it up to an endless uh, range and spectrum of, uh, of behaviors and, and, and the kind of coexistence of a smart building of vivid things with users communicating, not uh, in this uh, jacket uh, of, uh, of strict f uh, engineered uh, functions. It's smooth and it's vivid. So I think this is a very architectural approach and we should say thank you to AI that this is, we, we can do that. Yeah, that's it. I made uh, some functions here, for example, the function to get um, the, at a certain point on the globe, uh, at a certain time, a day, this is how where the solar radiation, the amplitude, uh, the, the angle and so on is coming from to make a nice interface for your building in at a day, at a certain day. Or this, for example, is um, how to make bed, nice buttons for the interface. So, or show temperature. This is the, yeah, whatever is how to develop these things. I think in, in future I will make an update, but this should be enough for today. Thanks for watching and uh, seeing you soon.